The Australian designed Cranker Crab is a unique and highly effective hard bodied lure, especially for targeting brim. In fact, it's become a bit of a go to for many tournament fishers in recent seasons. However, a lot of anglers still seem rather confused about how best to use this unusual lure, so I figured it might be useful to look at the absolute basics. The crab comes in a couple of different weights and I prefer to use the lightest model suited to the prevailing conditions. Because of its shape and wind resistant appendages, the cranker crab isn't the world's best casting lure, but you can still belt it out a reasonable distance, especially on light tackle. This lure works especially well around structure such as rocks, snags and jetty pylons where crabs are common, but it'll catch fish out in the open too. Here I'm casting to an old tree trunk lying in about three metres of water. The closer you get to the structure, the better. There's a small rock fish lying there. Oh. Sitting right under this log. Ooh. I think I'm lucky that that was a small one. <laughs> Make sure you allow the crab to sink all the way to the bottom, but watch that belly of line like a hawk for any pickups on the drop. Once the crab's sitting on the bottom with its floating claws wafting in the current, make contact with it and give it a few very short hops or slow drags. I find that a slow, subtle action is usually the best. Oh yeah! Oh, good bite. Good bite, Misty. You need to really slow down, even more than you might with a soft plastic. In fact, the crab often gets eaten while simply sitting on the bottom, especially if you've smeared it with a bit of scent, such as the proven Squidgy's S-Factor bite stimulant that I use. Another extremely effective presentation is to lift the crab a short distance off the bottom and simply shake or vibrate the rod as it sinks again. Watch that shake again, it's deadly. After a drag, hop or shake, allow the crab to sink back to the bottom and simply sit there. Intently watch that semi-slack belly of line between your rod tip and the water. Bites will often show as tiny twitches or plucks, or the line may simply tighten and draw away. Other times you won't feel anything at all until you go to lift again and encounter resistance. Oh yeah, got him. Oh, come on. Come away, come away. It's a big tree there. Oh. Good fish too. Oh yeah, he just picked that crab up so gently. Oh. oh, we're sitting right on top of the tree. He's a horse, an absolute horse. Come on, stay up here stuff down there. Slow down, take your time, remember that you're imitating a crab and you will catch fish on this lure. Oh yeah! The cranker crab isn't necessarily the best choice for every scenario, but it's a lure you really should have in your collection, especially if you're serious about brim fishing. <gasps> That's a good brim. They're not cheap, but when you consider their complex design and level of sophistication, it's pretty easy to see why they're reasonably expensive. 
There you go. Pinned on the cranker crab. Just in the corner of the jaw. He just pecked at it. All I was doing was lifting it off the bottom and giving the rod tip a bit of a shake and he's just come over and gone. Oh, really nice fish. Just pinned. You can't pull super hard on them, on those little treble hooks. But they seem to take a little while to realise what's going on when they get pinned on the crab. It just gives you that chance to get them away from the bad country. That's gorgeous. I'll get him in the live one. You can also buy replacement legs and claws if they get chewed up, which is neat. Be warned though, tweaking the crab can become highly addictive especially when you pin fish like this one on it. <laughs> Tight lines. If you enjoyed this clip and would like to see more like it, please take a moment to subscribe to my Starlow Gets Real channel on YouTube. Until next time, tight lines.